All right, welcome to hole number two. This is also a home site hole. Uh, we chose this one because it's a really nice view. And um, we've got a, a really nice, a lot of things to talk about in this particular pit. Uh, this particular one, uh, we decided on the parent material in this one, uh, judging the parent material at five to 25 inches. So that's clear down in here. So that's mist material that you see here in the upper part of the subsoil. The parent material here is LUS. So that is your windblown silty material. It's very flowery feeling. Um, no rocks per se or anything like that in it. So this is a really good example of what LUS feels and looks like. The slope on this particular pit was what it came out as 7 to 12 percent. That makes this an upland hill slope. The surface color here is brownish. And you can kind of see that that's pretty brown right there. Let it dry out just a little bit. That doesn't take long. So that's a nice brownish color in your surface. The erosion, the previous erosion on this particular pit, we gave it to you on the site card because we didn't have enough consistency between the five pits today. Um, for everybody to be seeing the same thing. So the erosion that we gave you on this site is severe. So it varied somewhere between two to four inches and that's kind of on the break point. So it's a little hard to see in there, but there's about, here's a decent little break of the good topsoil here that's kind of scraped off a little bit. But up in here, this is kind of where it's really mixed. So when we put a little bit of water on there, you see we got a decent little break right about here where the redder subsoil is and then we got the topsoil, but we've got a lot of mixing of this red material. So tillage has pulled a lot of this subsoil up into what our eight inch layer. So we're looking at that mixing, it's pretty heavily mixed. Surface texture on this one um, is silt loam it's a medium texture very 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 common here in the southern part of the state because we have a pretty good lust cap on just about every profile out there so lust is a big dominant parent material and that is really indicative of our silt loam textures so it's a medium surface the subsoil texture you're looking here in this layer here of course once again this year it's out of buckets but the heaviest of the most clay amount in the subsoil was a meat was moderately clayey so that would have been right about in here uh, in the upper part of the soil profile so uh, this is um, a silty clay loam so another really common texture in our lust soils natural soil drainage so in this particular one, we're looking at 10 to 18, once again, for to make the distinction between whether it's poorly or somewhat poorly drained. In this particular, we have no gray colors above 18. So since we don't have there, we go from 18 to 30. And we start to see some things that look a little suspicious. And he can get out of here. Um, looks a little suspicious. These look really gray. We even see some things up here. But what those actually are is if you put a little bit of water on them, you can see those fade away and they turn pretty gray. So, um, or pretty tan, I mean. So those are actually silk coatings. So you can spritz in between the yardsticks so that you can kind of see that true color that's behind those uh, silk coatings there. So. So above 30 inches, we don't have anything that we consider to be gray. Um, we do have some three chroma stuff coming in, but we don't have any gray colors above 30. So that makes this particular pit well drained. So we see a little bit coming in below there though. Limiting layer. The limiting layer in this particular pit is a fragile pan. And if you haven't seen a good pan, take pictures of this one because this one is about as good as you can ever hope to see. So when we're looking at a fragile pan, we're looking at these big dense prisms, which is all this brown material that you see between this filling 
and this filling or the crack that's between the, pri the prisms. So in order to make the qualification for a prism, it has to be at least four inches. So that's a little bit about my knife blade. So you can see that we've definitely got that covered in this particular one. And if you, you'll be able to see on the bottom where we've got the stakes below and behind us, you will actually be able to look down and see the top of it. And you can kind of see that we've got a big prism right here. There's another edge of one here. So you can almost get to see it in 3D in this pit, which is really cool. So just remember, it kind of looks like giraffe skin. So you've got these big brown polygons with these creamier color edges around them. So there is a fried Japan here at 21 to 40 inches. It's below, it's below the 20 inch mark. So, but coming in above 40 pretty easy. And that is site number two.